and the real home is our real self. That is how beautifully one master and my master also used to explain. See that home of his body, physical body, is the physical home. And home of the sense organ is the right perception, free from likes and dislikes. You see someone and um, eyes do not say anything, but the mind says, I don't like this person. So it means it is no fault of the eyes. You hear a particular song and the mind says, I don't want to hear. So how long you can plug off your ears? Ears are open. All the sense organs give us the knowledge of the senses. Knowledge of the objects outside, isn't it? But still the mind interferes. The mind interferes and dictates the sense organs and that disturbs the calmness and the peace of the mind. My master used to say that you envy someone, you hate someone, that guy is sleeping soundly and you are always disturbed. You are thinking about that guy. You see how systematically uh, our masters teaches so the home of the physical body is the physical home. Home of the sense organ is right perception. Eyes are meant to see the form. So let me see the form. Here is Anne. Here is Sophie. Here is John. Here is Lisa. Here is Bhavya. So first perception should be clear. What is that? Bhavya, daughter? No. First, Bhavya is a human being, Anne is a human being, John is a human being. So when we have that perception, which also known as the pure mind, that pure mind sits in his home. So what is the home of the mind? The natural state of the mind is calmness. Natural state. Natural state of the mind is calmness. Then comes the intellect. The real home of the intellect is the wisdom. What is that wisdom? Wisdom comes from viveka. Wisdom means I know what is real and what is unreal. Huh? The intellect is aware at every moment, what is real and what is unreal. And once sense organs are functioning naturally, when a uh, body is seems to be steady, huh, then mind is calm and pure. Intellect is aware of the real versus the unreal you are in a state of mindfulness or meditation 24 by 7. Finished. That is why we say mind is, that is why we say what we say. We say that meditation our mindfulness is effortless, it is natural, it is not a practice, it is a state of consciousness. You know, intellect, mind, intellect is deep, deepest. Before that, there is also an ego sense. We can say if the ego, if our ego sits with the re, in the real self, uh, ego sits in the real self, then what happened? Then we are awakened. So the nearest is ego, 
then intellect, then mind, then uh, mind and sense organ, and ultimately then the physical body. Consider all these layers as different colors, glasses, and at the center there is a bright white real self. When the real self passes through the ego, it blocks some light, it colors. Second coloring through the intellect, if the wisdom is not there. Third coloring through the mind, uh, which is not calm, full of impurities, anger, hesitation, anxiety, duality, etc., etc. Then sense organ does not have a right perception. Then the body continues to visit. And then I see a particular person, thing in the world. It means the mind is not straightened. Buddha says, straighten the mind, then meditate. Why he says, first straighten the mind. So he, he says, all experiences takes place in the mind. Hence, the sense organ has a wrong perception. The mind is crooked. And then intellect is dictated by the mind. Ego says this, ego claims the wrong notion is right. So he summed up, first straighten the mind and then meditate. Now see another, <laughs> another reason why we don't succeed in meditation. Because we do not straighten the mind. But in every meditation, the goal should be clear. And the goal is chosen, understood, known by the intellect. Say you sit in a uh, train, you have the, and the conductor comes and he says, oh, do you have a ticket? No, no, I'll buy the ticket. Conductor asks you which station you will leave. Forget about the station, give me the ticket. So that is what we think for meditation. If the goal is not clear, the mind will activate its duality, conflict, anger, hesitation, past impression, and then we cannot reach to the goal. So our goal should be clear. What is departure point and what is arrival point. This is our second problem comes to the mind when we are not clear why we are doing meditation and mindfulness. The ultimate goal of meditation is to find my real self, to discover that pure consciousness that transcends, that transcends all the challenges posed by the mind. But we should also be very clear about that real self. So now what the Buddha says, as a Fletcher straightens the arrow, so the man of understanding makes straight the trembling unsteady mind, which is difficult to guard, difficult to restrain, then only one is able to succeed, one succeeds in meditation. What he is pointing that we should become a seeker. Now, if you become a seeker, you have a faith plus knowledge, both are there. Knowledge is clear that I have a house in Arizona and then you've flown from New Jersey to Arizona, and then at the same time, with that reasoning, you had the faith, and that faith and the reason together, it brought you here. See, everything is so simple, my friend. So once we apply the reason, there is a clarity, there is a conviction, and after that, the intellect, that knowledge must come down to the heart. 
means now I am very clear I should have a faith that there is a real self. Mind says, forget about it, you know, who lives in permanent happiness? Mind creates doubt. Intellect says, no, I have clearly understood there is a clarity. Allow the intellect to inspire the heart. And when you inspire the heart, it becomes the faith. So the faith and the reason should go together to straighten the mind. And then you meditate. Only one session is required. I'm deviating from a topic a little bit. But that deviation sometimes helps us to understand also. What is that understanding? Say you have succeeded in meditation. What is going to happen? You wake up in the morning and the knowledge reveals in the mind. You need not to do anything. The knowledge reveals in the mind. Problem is there. You sit in meditation. The solution reveals in the mind. And that knowledge continues to reveal in the mind, finding the solution of the challenges of the day-to-day -day life. That is why you see these monks are always smiling. Even they have a lot of challenges in their life. So it is. Then what happens? Then it continues to keep the sense organ to function with the right perception, mind with the purity, intellect with the wisdom, and then we succeed in meditation. That is why Buddha says, as if Fletcher straightens the arrow. Oh, you, you might have seen arrow in the bow. So in ancient time, uh, the arrow is made from the stem of a tree. So they used to cut and they used to make the arrow straight. So they are, there is a simile. They said, first the purification of the mind. So they compared the, uh, the arrow in making with a crooked mind, with a mind with the impurity. It has to be made straight. Means the purification of the mind is necessary. Why? Because you gain the natural focus. Because now the goal is clear. Now the mind is not running after the dualities of pain and the pleasure. It is seeking only the pure consciousness. So Dhammapad is one of the best book written by, as it is known, it is written by our master Buddha. in which he says, straighten the mind, how Fletcher straightens the stick and makes an arrow. That is a prerequisite for any meditation. It means I have to think of it, I have to contemplate, I have to reflect on it. What we are contemplating every day, I have a lot of problems, I have a lot of challenges. We dig deep inside our mind that knows lot of challenges from the past and we constantly think of it. If we do not start thinking and contemplating, the mind does not become straight. You see that the stick is cut, refined. Similarly, the mind should also be educated to accept what is desired and what is not desired. Pain is desired? No. Should I react to that person? No. Should I have an anxiety? No. So when we constantly guard our mind, no. So then what happens? So when who says no? Intellect. When the mind says, oh, I hate this guy, the intellect also agrees with it. 
we are gone. My master used to say always, before I create a hatred, first I have to give birth of a hatred, envy, reaction, anxiety in my heart first. And then I express the same outside. So when we cut that, refine that by contemplation and reflecting on it, the mind becomes straight. That straight mind is ready to meditate. So you see the beautiful, uh, not a verse, but it is a statement uh, Buddha has written, as a Fletcher straightens the arrow. So he uh, compares the arrow with the mind. So the man of understanding means I have to think and contemplate. Same principles everywhere. Understanding, man of understanding, makes straight the trembling, unsteady mind. Why, the, how the mind trembles when I'm in anxiety, when I have duality, when I have conflict, when the mind lives in natural state. Let me, let us live it. Which is difficult to guard and difficult to restrain, but not impossible. Buddha says it is not impossible, it is difficult. It comes step by step when we continue the journey. as a Fletcher, so the Fletcher knows how to make an arrow from the stem. So a seeker knows how to take care of the mind. So the Fletcher uh, is compared to a person who is a seeker. And the seeker knows this is the right goal. This is what I have to do. Oh, mind starts becoming upset and then you allow, you invoke the intellect. Why I am upset? Because of anything outside in the world? Hold on. Drop all the thoughts. See the calmness of the mind. Ask the mind to go to your home. Calmness. Ask the sense organs, drop the likes and dislikes. So the mind withdraws, the sense organs withdraws its side. I remember one thing beautiful, and we will start our practice. In one of the Upanishads, one master says, when the object merges into the sense organ, any object, oh, I know this person and I dislike, forget about disliking and liking, that person's image is absorbed in the sense organ. The sense organ is merged into the mind. Mind merges into the intellect. Intellect merges into the ego sense. And the ego merges into the real self. We are already in the state of meditation. But we have to find out how that object merges into the sense organ. If we have likes and dislikes, can that object merge into the sense organ? No. Oh, drop it. So with that likes and dislikes, uh, the mind creates an attachment and detachment, and that creates a delusion. So how the sense organ will merge into the mind when the mind is free from attachment and detachment? Simple. And how the mind will absorb into the intellect if the intellect follows and understands and is aware of what is real and unreal. And when the intellect merges into the sense organ, not to the into the ego, when the intellect wisdom tells me that ego is a delusion, what is left? Only one thing is left, that is <laughs> real self. Am I too complex or easy? <laughs> 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 so, 
<laughs> let us start over. <laughs> and we will 